morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening and good day to all of you who are listening in Guyana and overseas. Welcome to another Straight Talk program. We have been inviting you to join with us in these discussions because we believe that people enlightened and people educated with respect to the situation in Guyana would be in a better position to discuss and to exchange with their friends and their relatives the ongoing situation in our country. Today we will talk about the topic how to stay in power without holding general and regional elections. We chose this topic precisely because that is what is happening in our country today. And even though most of these programs have been about politics, it is important to recognize that politics guides us in our daily lives. Even at death, on many occasions, it is politics that guides those who bury the dead. But let us come back to our team, how to stay in power without holding elections. This is the recipe which the government of the APN UAFC is, is following, uh, has been following for quite some time. It's what you might call a recipe for confusion, a recipe for riots. They have been doing so in violation of the Constitution and in violation of the rulings of the Caribbean Court of Justice. How are they able to get away with this? Because people might very well ask, how could you have a government in office holding on to power illegally and getting away with it? The answer to that lies in the following. First of all, it's the mindset of the Granger-led administration or coalition. What is the mindset? What they have is what is called a fixed mindset as distinct from a growth mindset. A fixed mindset is when you believe that you are born with certain capabilities and that it can't change. The growth mindset is quite the opposite. These are individuals who recognize that they're born with certain qualities, a certain degree of intelligence, but it can grow, it can develop, and they can become much more broader and universal in the outlook towards life and circumstances around them. In my own humble opinion, the Granger-led coalition administration has been caught up in what is called the fixed mindset. In other words, they cannot see beyond their noses. And as far as they're concerned, they have set themselves on a particular path for which there will be no deviation. So that is the first element, the mindset. Secondly is do or say one thing but do something else. That's another dimension of the recipe of staying in power without holding elections. This government has been saying quite a lot, but has been doing very little. And when I say doing very little, I mean doing very little for the upliftment of the Guyanese people. In fact, for the upliftment of all sections of the population. And so, saying one thing and doing another is characteristic of this administration. What they've been getting away with also is they've been saying that they accept the consequences of the no confidence motion. But in effect, they are ignoring it. And what do they do? Or what have they done is to take the matter to the courts which they know 
will take a considerable amount of time before this matter is brought to conclusion. And that is precisely what has happened. Seven months have passed since the no confidence motion and these APNU AFC people are still in the government. This is something that is quite unacceptable. So they say they are upholding the consequences of the no confidence motion, but at the same time, they're ignoring what the court has ruled. The other part of the, of, the, uh, of the hypocritical nature of the government is that they say they accept the court ruling. Separate and distinct from what the parliament has ruled, they accept the court ruling, but on the other hand, they don't pay attention to what the court has ruled in our country. So they reject outright the court ruling and they find ways and means of getting around it. The main objective is to stay in power at all costs. At the end of all this maneuvering, the name of the game is mass deception. Mass deception meaning to deceive en masse, that is to say, the entire population, to try to deceive the entire population into believing that they are abiding with the no confidence motion, that they're abiding with the court rulings, they're abiding with the constitution, but nevertheless, doing nothing at the same time. Now what is important to point out is that part of this game plan has to do with the appointment of a new chairman for GCO. We're engaged in, unfortunately, what I would describe as a kind of a merry-go-round. Names are being submitted by the leader of the opposition. Names are being rejected by the president who continues to insist that the Caribbean Court of Justice gave him the right, that's right, I said the right, to include names in the six that the leader of the opposition is expected to submit to him. Many legal, legal luminaries have argued that this is not the case. The Caribbean Court of Justice never gave Mr. Granger, the right to put to the opposition leader his choice as to who should be the chairman of GCOM. But we all know that this merry-go-round has to end at some point in time. The president will have, in accordance with the court ruling, accept one of the six names that will be submitted to him by the leader of the opposition to be chairman of GCO. There's no way he can extricate himself from the constitution which imposes upon him the obligation to so do. Now, this brings me to another important point. I said before that he who controls GCO, meaning Jacob has three from the government, three from the opposition, and a chairman. But anyone who has, if it so happens, control of the three and the chairman, then it means they have a majority of four. And whatever they say goes as a decision of Jacob. So control of Jacob is very critical. No one should control Jacob. GCOM should be an independent body as enshrined in the Constitution to make its own decisions. So the first element also as we go down in the game plan is control of GCOM. And that is what the battle is over at this point in time. We hope that this agony will be brought to an end. In fact, the agony of the Guyanese people the media had been complaining, or I should say had been pointing out the excruciating 
agony which the nation has been going through, all because of Mr. Granger's intransigence in not hastily, speedily, and quickly appointing a chairman of the Guyana Elections Commission, because without a chairman of the Elections Commission, the process cannot move forward. And that is part of the game plan of Mr. Granger, not to make the process move forward too speedily, because in making the process slow down, that gives him more time to stay in the government. So that's GCO. The second is the question of the list. There's a big debate still going on in our country on this question of the voters' list. House to house registration is going on apace. All over the country, the opposition has stated very openly and consistently that they're boycotting the house to house registration. Why are they doing that? They're doing that because the Caribbean Court of Justice named GCOM as a party to the rulings it made concerning the effect and impact of the no confidence motion. That means to say that GCOM is also tied in principle to the rulings of the CCJ as one of the constitutional bodies in our countries which must so act in accordance with the rulings of the CCJ. Now if GCOM without the chairman goes ahead willy-nilly and begin to conduct house-to-house -house registration. It means that they are acting contrary to the CCJ's ruling. And that the current house-to-house -house exercise that is taking place is an illegal exercise. GCOM should await the appointment of a new chairman. This matter should be fully ventilated by the entire commission at the duly constituted meeting, and a decision should be made on how to move forward. We have heard Mr. Lowenfield state that the list that was used during the local government election, that list could be used again. And with a process of, how to, of, a process of uh, claims and objections, that, lead, that list could be sanitized. We don't know what made him say this. In fact, he also went on to say that the 20,000 names with Mr. Granger floated as being uh, illegally on the list. He doesn't know where those 20 names, 20,000, sorry, names came from. So this whole thing is being made into a big national joke. And that is so far as the list is concerned. And then you have the machinery Machinery of GCOM meaning personnel employed at GCOM. Personnel who work in the house to house registration process. Personnel who work at the different locations or the offices of GCOM in the various regions. Personnel who work at the headquarters of GCOM. And personnel, most important of all, who will be employed to work on elections day. You know, the army and the police and other joint services representatives would vote before the civilians vote on election day. And it wouldn't be surprising if in, in employing or recruiting its staff, politics gets into that. And so these three Elements combined, control of GCOM, the credibility of the list, and the independence of the machinery. These are the three components that are extremely important in order to have free and fair elections in this country. I have not mentioned as yet issues pertaining to, for example, materials to be used during the elections, like the ink and things like that. Nor have I mentioned foreign observers. Those are issues that will be dealt with at a later stage. 
But it is important at this point in time for us to focus on two things. What is happening with respect to the chairman of GCOM, appointment of a new chairman of GCOM, and secondly, what is happening in respect to the current house-to-house -house registration. Now, there's one thing that we need to be clear about, and that is because the opposition has called on its supporters to boycott the house-to-house -house registration, you may very well end up, I should say, not you, we, may very well end up with a flawed list because thousands of people will not be on that list as a result of the boycott. Now, when that list is presented to the political parties as the preliminary voters list, and the political parties recognize the flaws in it, and that they cannot go to elections with such a flawed list, what does that mean? It means rejection of that list, and probably, probably, a new process being adopted to generate a list that is acceptable to the political parties before the elections. Let me remind you that prior to the 1992 elections, we had a similar experience like this. Elections were due in 1990. When the list was presented to Mr. Hoyt, the political parties threw it out. And that is where the Carter Center, for example, came in later on. And the list had to be sanitized, the list had to be cleaned up. And as a result of that, Hoyt got two more years added to his five years. And so this may very well be part of the gay plan of the APNU-AFC to give themselves more time, two more years probably, in order to correct a flawed voters list which they themselves allowed to be flawed by virtue of proceeding with a house-to-house -house registration illegally which was not accepted by the main opposition People's Progressive Party. So it's all a question of buying time to end up sometime in 2020 or maybe 2022, who knows, before elections are held in this country. So the biggest fear of the overwhelming majority of Guyanese right now is that we may not have one elections in accordance with the CCJ's ruling or elections in 2050, 2020, and possibly elections at a later stage, with the APNU remaining in office. That is the biggest fear of many Guyanese. They cannot live under, I should say we, cannot live under the APNU AFC under these conditions. How can we survive under the APNU AFC with them having an extension of their tenure or extension of their term in office. Now, people may not want to hear this, but this is a program that's called Straight Talk. Nobody wants to hear the APNU AFC remaining in office beyond 2015 or even beyond what the CCG has ruled. But a close analysis of all the signs that have been taking place ever since the APNU-AFC got into the government, points in that direction. You know, there's a saying, you don't have to see it, or you don't have to see it to smell it. You don't have to see it to smell it. Well, many of us, including myself, have been around for quite some time. We visited elections since 1968 in this country. And we know the tricks of the game. We know all the tricks that we'll try in order to stay in government at all costs. So that our task now is to expose them whenever we see skullduggery taking place. Our task is to expose them. 
But exposing them is not enough. We have to fight. And when I say fight, I mean engage in peaceful demonstrations in the towns, in the villages, and in the city of Georgetown. I'm not talking about an uprising. I am speaking about peaceful protests, as happens in many countries of the world when they're fed up with a government that is totally undemocratic and just wants to extend their life in, in, in government at any cost. So this is what the task that is before us, exposing them and protesting as vigorously, as strenuously, as unitedly as we can. We need to bring all the political and social forces together. As I said in previous programs, this is not a struggle for one political party. And the victory will not be for one political party or one section of the population. The struggle is for all. And the victory, the fruits of that struggle, is for all Guyanese as well. So my friends, the struggle will be long and hard. But we've been through struggles like this before, and we've survived, and not only survived, we have overcome. And as they said in the American Civil Rights Movement, the song, We Shall Overcome. Victory is inevitable. But victory will not come to us on a platter. We have to fight for it. And we have to do so until the APNU AFC is removed from office and replaced by a more democratic, humane, and unity government led by the People's Progressive Party, CIVIC. Thank you very much. I hope and I trust you will think about what we have discussed today until next time, goodbye.